In electrical power generation, the distinct ways of generating electricity incur significantly different costs. Calculations of these costs can be made at the point of connection to a load or to the electricity grid. The cost is typically given per kilowatt-hour or megawatt-hour. It includes the initial capital, discount rate, as well as the costs of continuous operation, fuel, and maintenance. This type of calculation assists policymakers, researchers and others to guide discussions and decision making. The levelized cost of energy LCOE is a measure of a power source that allows comparison of different methods of electricity generation on a consistent basis. It is an economic assessment of the average total cost to build and operate a power generating asset over its lifetime divided by the total energy output of the asset over that lifetime. The LCOE can also be regarded as the average minimum price at which electricity must be sold in order to break even over the lifetime of the project. Topic. Cost factors While calculating costs, several internal cost factors have to be considered. Note the use of costs, which is not the actual selling price, since this can be affected by a variety of factors such as subsidies and taxes. Capital costs including waste disposal and decommissioning costs for nuclear energy tend to be low for fossil fuel power stations, high for wind turbines, solar PV photovoltaics, very high for waste to energy, wave and tidal, solar thermal, and nuclear. Fuel costs, high for fossil fuel and biomass sources, low for nuclear, and zero for many renewables. Fuel costs can vary somewhat unpredictably over the life of the generating equipment, due to political and other factors. Factors such as the costs of waste and associated issues and different insurance costs are not included in the following, works power, own use or parasitic load, that is, the portion of generated power actually used to run the station's pumps and fans has to be allowed for, to evaluate the total cost of production of electricity, the streams of costs are converted to a net present value using the time value of money. These costs are all brought together using discounted cash flow. Topic. Levelized cost of electricity The levelized cost of electricity LCOE, also known as levelized energy cost LEC, is the net present value of the unit cost of electricity over the lifetime of a generating asset. It is often taken as a proxy for the average price that the generating asset must receive in a market to break even over its lifetime. It is a first-order economic assessment of the cost competitiveness of an electricity generating system that incorporates all costs over its lifetime, initial investment, operations and maintenance, cost of fuel, cost of capital. The levelized cost is that value for which an equal valued fixed revenue delivered over the life of the assets generating profile would cause the project to break even. This can be roughly calculated as the net present value of all costs over the lifetime of the asset divided by the total electrical energy output of the asset. The levelized cost of electricity LCOE is given by L C O E equals sum of costs over lifetime 
sum of electrical energy produced over lifetime equals T equals 1 n i t plus m t plus f t 1 plus r t t equals 1 n e t 1 plus r t Display style mathem L C O E equals F R A C text sum of costs over lifetime text sum of electrical energy produced over lifetime equals F R A C sum underscore T equals one carrot N F R A C I underscore T plus M underscore T plus F underscore T left one plus R right carrot T Sum underscore T equals one carrot N F R A C E underscore T left one plus R right carrot T Typically the LCOE is calculated over the design lifetime of a plant, which is usually 20 to 40 years, and given in the units of currency per kilowatt-hour or megawatt-day, for example AUD per kilowatt-hour or year per kilowatt-hour or per megawatt-hour, for example AUD per megawatt-hour as tabulated below. However, care should be taken in comparing different LCOE studies and the sources of the information as the LCOE for a given energy source is highly dependent on the assumptions, financing terms and technological deployment analyzed. In particular, assumption of capacity factor has significant impact on the calculation of LCOE. Thus, a key requirement for the analysis is a clear statement of the applicability of the analysis based on justified assumptions. Many scholars, such as Paul Joskow, have described limits to the levelized cost of electricity metric for comparing new generating sources. In particular, LCOE ignores time effects associated with matching production to demand. This happens at two levels. Dispatchability, the ability of a generating system to come online, go offline, or ramp up or down, quickly as demand swings. The extent to which the availability profile matches or conflicts with the market demand profile, thermally lethargic technologies like coal and nuclear are physically incapable of fast ramping. Capital intensive technologies such as wind, solar, and nuclear are economically disadvantaged unless generating at maximum availability since the LCOE is nearly all sunk cost capital investment. Intermittent power sources, such as wind and solar, may incur extra costs associated with needing to have storage or backup generation available. At the same time, intermittent sources can be competitive if they are available to produce when demand and prices are highest, such as solar during summertime midday peaks seen in hot countries where air conditioning is a major consumer. Despite these time limitations, leveling costs is often a necessary prerequisite for making comparisons on an equal footing before demand profiles are considered, and the levelized cost metric is widely used for comparing technologies at the margin, where grid implications of new generation can be neglected. 
Another limitation of the LCOE metric is the influence of energy efficiency and conservation EEC. EEC has caused the electricity demand of many countries to remain flat or decline. Considering only the LCOE for utility-scale plants will tend to maximize generation and risks overestimating required generation due to efficiency, thus, lowballing their LCOE. For solar systems installed at the point of end use, it is more economical to invest in EEC first, then solar resulting in a smaller required solar system than what would be needed without the EEC measures. However, designing a solar system on the basis of LCOE would cause the smaller system LCOE to increase as the energy generation measured in kWh drops faster than the system cost dollar. The whole of system life cycle cost should be considered, not just the LCOE of the energy source. LCOE is not as relevant to end users than other financial considerations such as income, cash flow, mortgage, leases, rent, and electricity bills. Comparing solar investments in relation to these can make it easier for end users to make a decision, or using cost-benefit calculations and or an asset's capacity value or contribution to peak on a system or circuit level. <inaudible> Avoided cost The U.S. Energy Information Administration has recommended that levelized costs of non-dispatchable sources such as wind or solar may be better compared to the avoided energy cost rather than to the LCOE of dispatchable sources such as fossil fuels or geothermal. This is because introduction of fluctuating power sources may or may not avoid capital and maintenance costs of backup dispatchable sources. Levelized avoided cost of energy lace is the avoided costs from other sources divided by the annual yearly output of the non-dispatchable source. However, the avoided cost is much harder to calculate accurately. Topic. Marginal cost of electricity A more accurate economic assessment might be the marginal cost of electricity. This value works by comparing the added system cost of increasing electricity generation from one source versus that from other sources of electricity generation see merit order. Topic. External costs of energy sources Typically pricing of electricity from various energy sources may not include all external costs, that is, the costs indirectly borne by society as a whole as a consequence of using that energy source. These may include enabling costs, environmental impacts, usage lifespans, energy storage, recycling costs, or beyond insurance accident effects. The U.S. Energy Information Administration predicts that coal and gas are set to be continually used to deliver the majority of the world's electricity. This is expected to result in the evacuation of millions of homes in low-lying areas, and an annual cost of hundreds of billions of dollars worth of property damage. Furthermore, with a number of island nations becoming slowly submerged underwater due to rising sea levels, massive international climate litigation lawsuits against fossil fuel users are currently beginning in the International Court of 
Justice, an EU-funded research study known as Extern, or Externalities of Energy, undertaken over the period of 1995 to 2005 found that the cost of producing electricity from coal or oil would double over its present value, and the cost of electricity production from gas would increase by 30% if external costs such as damage to the environment and to human health, from the particulate matter, nitrogen oxides, chromium V, river water alkalinity, mercury poisoning and arsenic emissions produced by these sources, were taken into account. It was estimated in the study that these external, downstream, fossil fuel costs amount up to 1% to 2% of the EU's entire gross domestic product GDP, and this was before the external cost of global warming from these sources was even included. Coal has the highest external cost in the EU, and global warming is the largest part of that cost, a means to address a part of the external costs of fossil fuel generation is carbon pricing—the method most favored by economics for reducing global warming emissions. Carbon pricing charges those who emit carbon dioxide CO2 for their emissions. That charge, called a carbon price, is the amount that must be paid for the right to emit one ton of CO2 into the atmosphere. Carbon pricing usually takes the form of a carbon tax or a requirement to purchase permits to emit also called allowances. Depending on the assumptions of possible accidents and their probabilities external costs for nuclear power vary significantly and can reach between 0.2 and 200 quart per kilowatt hour. Furthermore, nuclear power is working under an insurance framework that limits or structures accident liabilities in accordance with the Paris Convention on Nuclear Third-Party Liability, the Brussels Supplementary Convention, and the Vienna Convention on Civil Liability for Nuclear Damage and in the U.S. the Price-Anderson Act. It is often argued that this potential shortfall in liability represents an external cost not included in the cost of nuclear electricity, but the cost is small, amounting to about 0.1% of the levelized cost of electricity. According to a CBO study, these beyond insurance costs for worst case scenarios are not unique to nuclear power, as hydroelectric power plants plants are similarly not fully insured against a catastrophic event such as the Banqiao Dam disaster, where 11 million people lost their homes and from 30,000 to 200,000 people died, or large dam failures in general. As private insurers base dam insurance premiums on limited scenarios, major disaster insurance in this sector is likewise provided by the state. Because externalities are diffuse in their effect, external costs cannot be measured directly, but must be estimated. One approach estimate external costs of environmental impact of electricity is the Methodological Convention of Federal Environment Agency of Germany. That method arrives at external costs of electricity from lignite at 10.75 eurocent per kilowatt hour, from hard coal 8.94 eurocent per kilowatt hour, from natural gas 4.91 eurocent per kilowatt hour, from photovoltaic 1.18 eurocent per kilowatt hour, from wind 0.26 eurocent per kilowatt Watt hour and from hydro 0.18 eurocent per kilowatt hour. For nuclear, the Federal Environment Agency indicates no value, as different studies have results that vary by a factor of 1,000. 
It recommends the nuclear given the huge uncertainty, with the cost of the next inferior energy source to evaluate. Based on this recommendation the Federal Environment Agency, and with their own method, the Forum Ecological Social Market Economy, arrive at external environmental costs of nuclear energy at 10.7 to 34 quart per kilowatt hour. Topic. Additional cost factors Calculations often do not include wider system costs associated with each type of plant, such as long-distance transmission connections to grids, or balancing and reserve costs. Calculations do not include externalities such as health damage by coal plants, nor the effect of CO2 emissions on the climate change, ocean acidification and eutrophication, ocean current shifts. Decommissioning costs of nuclear plants are usually not included the USA is an exception, because the cost of decommissioning is included in the price of electricity, per the Nuclear Waste Policy Act, is therefore not full cost accounting. These types of items can be explicitly added as necessary depending on the purpose of the calculation. It has little relation to actual price of power, but assists policy makers and others to guide discussions and decision making. These are not minor factors but very significantly affect all responsible power decisions. Comparisons of life cycle greenhouse gas emissions show coal, for instance, to be radically higher in terms of GHGs than any alternative. Accordingly, in the analysis below, carbon-captured coal is generally treated as a separate source rather than being averaged in with other coal. Other environmental concerns with electricity generation include acid rain, ocean acidification and effect of coal extraction on watersheds. Various human health concerns with electricity generation, including asthma and smog, now dominate decisions in developed nations that incur health care costs publicly. A Harvard University Medical School study estimates the U.S. health costs of coal alone at between $300 and $500 billion U.S. dollars annually. While cost per kilowatt-hour of transmission varies drastically with distance, the long complex projects required to clear or even upgrade transmission routes make even attractive new supplies often incompetitive with conservation measures see below, because the timing of payoff must take the transmission upgrade into account. Topic. Current global studies Topic. Lazard 2018. In November, 2018, Lazard found that not only are utility-scale solar and wind cheaper than fossil fuels, I and some scenarios, alternative energy costs have decreased to the point that they are now at or below the marginal cost of conventional generation. Overall, Lazard found the low-end levelized cost of onshore wind generated energy as $29 per megawatt hour, compared to an average illustrative marginal cost of $36 per megawatt hour for coal. The levelized cost of utility scale solar is nearly identical to the illustrative marginal cost of coal, at $36 per megawatt hour. 
This comparison is accentuated when subsidizing onshore wind and solar, which results in levelized costs of energy of $14 per megawatt-hour and $32 per megawatt-hour, respectively. The mean levelized cost of energy of utility-scale PV technologies is down approximately 13% from last year and the mean levelized cost of energy of onshore wind has declined almost 7%. == <laughs> Bloomberg Bloomberg New Energy Finance estimates a global LCOE for onshore wind of $55 per megawatt hour, down 18% from the first six months of 2017, while the equivalent for solar PV without tracking systems is $70 per megawatt hour, also down 18%. Bloomberg does not provide its global public LCOEs for fossil fuels, but it notes in India they are significantly more expensive. BNEF is now showing benchmark LCOEs for onshore wind of just $39 per megawatt hour, down 46% on a year ago, and for solar PV at $41, down 45%. By comparison, coal comes in at $68 per megawatt hour, and combined cycle gas at $93. IRENA The International Renewable Energy Agency IRENA, released a study based on comprehensive international datasets in January 2018 which projects the fall by 2020 of the kilowatt cost of electricity from utility-scale renewable projects such as onshore wind farms to a point equal or below that of electricity from conventional sources. Topic. Banks 2018. The European Bank for Reconstruction and Development EBRD says that, "...renewables are now cheapest energy source," elaborating. The bank believes that renewable energy markets in many of the countries where it invests have reached a stage where the introduction of competitive auctions will lead both to a steep drop in electricity prices and an increase in investment. The World Bank, World Bank President Jim Yong Kim agreed on 10 October 2018, we are required by our by-laws to go with the lowest cost option, and renewables have now come below the cost of fossil fuels. <laughs> Regional and historical studies Topic: Australia. According to various studies, the cost for wind and solar has dramatically reduced since 2006. For example, the Australian Climate Council states that over the five years between 2009 to 2014, solar costs fell by 75%, making them comparable to coal, and are expected to continue dropping over the next five years by another 45% from 2014 prices. They also found that wind has been cheaper than coal since 2013, and that coal and gas will become less viable as subsidies are withdrawn and there is the expectation that they will eventually have to pay the costs of pollution. A CO2 CRC report, printed on 27 November 2015, titled 
wind, solar, coal and gas to reach similar costs by 2030." provides the following updated situation in Australia. The updated LCOE analysis finds that in 2015 natural gas combined cycle and supercritical pulverised coal both black and brown plants have the lowest LCOEs of the technologies covered in the study. Wind is the lowest cost large scale renewable energy source, while rooftop solar panels are competitive with retail electricity prices. By 2030, the LCOE ranges of both conventional coal and gas technologies, as well as wind and large scale solar, converge to a common range of $50 to $100 per megawatt hour. An updated report, posted on 27 September 2017, titled Renewables will be cheaper than coal in the future. Here are the numbers. Indicated that a 100% renewables system is competitive with new build supercritical, ultra supercritical coal, which, according to the Jacobs calculations in the report link above, would come in at around $75.80 per megawatt hour between 2020 and 2050. This projection for supercritical coal is consistent with other studies by the CO2CRC in 2015 $80 per megawatt hour and used by CSIRO in 2017 $65-80 per megawatt hours. Topic: France The International Energy Agency and EDF have estimated for 2011 the following costs. For nuclear power, they include the costs due to new safety investments to upgrade the French nuclear plant after the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster. The cost for those investments is estimated at €4 Euros per megawatt hour. Concerning solar power, the estimate of €293 Euros per megawatt-hour is for a large plant capable of producing in the range of 50 to 100 gigawatt-hours per year located in a favorable location such as in southern Europe. For a small household plant that can produce around 3 megawatt hours per year, the cost is between 400 and 700 euros per megawatt hour, depending on location. Solar power was by far the most expensive renewable source of electricity among the technologies studied, although increasing efficiency and longer lifespan of photovoltaic panels together with reduced production costs have made this source of energy more competitive since 2011. By 2017, the cost of photovoltaic solar power had decreased to less than 50 euros per megawatt hour. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Germany. In November 2013, the Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems Eyes assessed the levelized generation costs for newly built power plants in the German electricity sector. PV systems reached LCOE between 0.078 and 0.142 euro per kilowatt hour in the third quarter of 2013, depending on the type of power plant, ground mounted utility scale or small rooftop solar PV, and average German insulation of 1000 to 1200 kilowatt hours per square meter per year GHI. There are no LCOE figures available for electricity generated by recently built German nuclear power plants as none have been constructed since the late 1980s. 
An update of the EYES study was published in March 2018. Topic: Japan. A 2010 study by the Japanese government, pre-Fukushima disaster, called the Energy White Paper, concluded the cost for kilowatt hour was 49 yen for solar, 10 yen to 14 yen for wind, and 5 yen or 6 yen for nuclear power. Masayoshi Sun, an advocate for renewable energy, however, has pointed out that the government estimates for nuclear power did not include the costs for reprocessing the fuel or disaster insurance liability. Sun estimated that if these costs were included, the cost of nuclear power was about the same as wind power. Topic. United Kingdom The Institution of Engineers and Shipbuilders in Scotland commissioned a former Director of Operations of the British National Grid, Colin Gibson, to produce a report on generation levelised costs that for the first time would include some of the transmission costs as well as the generation costs. This was published in December 2011. The institution seeks to encourage debate of the issue, and has taken the unusual step among compilers of such studies of publishing a spreadsheet. On 27 February 2015, Vattenfall Windcraft has agreed to build the Horns Rev 3 offshore wind farm at a price of €10.31 per kilowatt hour. This has been quoted as below £100 per megawatt hour. In 2013 in the United Kingdom for a new-to-build nuclear power plant Hinkley Point C, completion 2023, a feed-in tariff of £92.50 per megawatt hour around US$142 per megawatt hour plus compensation for inflation with a running time of 35 years was agreed. The Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy BEIS publishes regular estimates of the costs of different electricity generation sources, following on the estimates of the merged Department of Energy and Climate Change DECC. Levelized cost estimates for new generation projects begun in 2015 are listed in the table below. <laughs> United States Topic. Energy Information Administration The following data are from the Energy Information Administration's EIA Annual Energy Outlook released in 2015 AEO They are in dollars per megawatt hour 2013 United States dollars per megawatt hour these figures are estimates for plants going into service in 2020. The LCOE below is calculated based off a 30-year recovery period using a real after-tax weighted average cost of capital of 6.1%. For carbon intensive technologies, three percentage points are added to the WACC. This is approximately equivalent fee of $15 per metric ton of carbon dioxide CO2. Since 2010, the U.S. Energy Information Administration EIA has published the Annual Energy Outlook AEO, with yearly LCOE projections for future utility-scale facilities to be commissioned in about five years' time. 
In 2015, EIA has been criticized by the Advanced Energy Economy AEE Institute after its release of the AEO 2015 report to consistently underestimate the growth rate of renewable energy, leading to misperceptions about the performance of these resources in the marketplace. AEE points out that the average power purchase agreement PPA for wind power was already at $24 per megawatt-hour in 2013. Likewise, PPA for utility-scale solar PV are seen at current levels of $50 to $75 per megawatt-hour. These figures contrast strongly with EIA's estimated LCOE of $125 per megawatt hour or $114 per megawatt hour including subsidies for solar PV in 2020. The electricity sources which had the most decrease in estimated costs over the period 2010 to 2017 were solar photovoltaic down 81%, onshore wind down 63% and advanced natural gas combined cycle down 32%. For utility-scale generation put into service in 2040, the EIA estimated in 2015 that there would be further reductions in the constant dollar cost of concentrated solar power CSP down 18%, solar photovoltaic down 15%, offshore wind down 11%, and advanced nuclear down 7%. The cost of onshore wind was expected to rise slightly up 2% by 2040, while natural gas combined cycle electricity was expected to increase 9% to 10% over the period. Topic: <laughs> NREL Open A 2015 OpenA, sponsored jointly by the U.S. DOE and the National Renewable Energy Laboratory NREL, has compiled a historical cost of generation database covering a wide variety of generation sources. Because the data is open source it may be subject to frequent revision. Note only median value equals only one data point. Only max plus min value equals only two data points. Equals. Topic: California Energy Commission, 2014. Equals. LCOE data from the California Energy Commission report titled, Estimated Cost of New Renewable and Fossil Generation in California. The model data was calculated for all three classes of developers, merchant, investor-owned utility IOU, and publicly owned utility PU. Topic Lazard twenty fifteen equals in November 2015, the investment bank Lazard headquartered in New York, published its ninth annual study on the current electricity production costs of photovoltaics in the U.S. compared to conventional power generators. The best large-scale photovoltaic power plants can produce electricity at US$50 per megawatt-hour. The upper limit at US$60 per megawatt hour. In comparison, coal-fired plants are between sixty-five United States dollars and one hundred fifty dollars per megawatt hour. Nuclear power at ninety-seven United States dollars per megawatt hour. 
small photovoltaic power plants on roofs of houses are still at 184 to 300 USD per megawatt hour, but which can do without electricity transport costs. Onshore wind turbines are 32 to 77 USD per megawatt hour. One drawback is the intermittency of solar and wind power. The study suggests a solution in batteries as a storage, but these are still expensive so far. Lazard's long standing levelized cost of energy LCOE report is widely considered an industry benchmark. In 2015 Lazard published its inaugural Levelized Cost of Storage LCOS report, which was developed by the investment bank Lazard in collaboration with the energy consulting firm, Innovation. Below is the complete list of LCOEs by source from the investment bank Lazard. Note, asterisk asterisk battery storage is no longer include in this report 2015. It has been rolled into its own separate report LCOS 1.0, developed in consultation with Innovation Partners see charts below. Below are the LCOSs for different battery technologies. This category has traditionally been filled by diesel engines. These are behind the meter applications. Below are the LCOSs for different battery technologies. This category has traditionally been filled by natural gas engines. These are in front of the meter applications. Topic. Lazard 2016. On December 15, 2016 Lazard released version 10 of their LCOE report and version 2 of their LCOS report. Topic. Lazard 2017. On November 2, 2017 the investment bank Lazard released version 11 of their LCOE report and version 3 of their LCOS report. Below are the unsubsidized LCOSs for different battery technologies for behind the meter BTM applications. Below are the unsubsidized LCOSs for different battery technologies. Front of the meter. FTM applications. Note flow battery value range estimates. Topic <laughs> global. Topic <laughs> IEA and NEA 2015 The International Energy Agency and the Nuclear Energy Agency published a joint study in 2015 on LCOE data internationally. Topic: Other studies and analysis. Topic. Buffett Contract 2015. In a power purchase agreement in the United States in July 2015 for a period of 20 years of solar power will be paid 3.87 U-cent per kilowatt-hour 38 United States dollars and 70 cents per megawatt-hour. The solar system, which produces this solar power, is in Nevada USA, and has 100 MW capacity. <laughs> Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Solar Farm 2016. 
In the spring of 2016 a winning bid of 2.99 US cents per kilowatt hour of photovoltaic solar energy was achieved for the next 800 megawatts capacity phase of the Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid solar farm in Dubai. Topic: <laughs> Brookings Institution 2014 In 2014, the Brookings Institution published the net benefits of low and no carbon electricity technologies which states, after performing an energy and emissions cost analysis, that the net benefits of new nuclear, hydro, and natural gas combined cycle plants far outweigh the net benefits of new wind or solar plants. With the most cost effective low carbon power technology being determined to be nuclear power. Topic: <inaudible> Brazilian electricity mix, the renewable and non-renewable exergetic cost, 2014. As long as exergy stands for the useful energy required for an economic activity to be accomplished, it is reasonable to evaluate the cost of the energy on the basis of its exergy content. Besides, as exergy can be considered as measure of the departure of the environmental conditions, it also serves as an indicator of environmental impact, taking into account both the efficiency of supply chain from primary exergy inputs and the efficiency of the production processes. In this way, exergoeconomy can be used to rationally distribute the exergy costs and CO2 emission cost among the products and by-products of a highly integrated Brazilian electricity mix. Based on the thermoeconomy methodologies, some authors have shown that exergoeconomy provides an opportunity to quantify the renewable and non-renewable specific exergy consumption, to properly allocate the associated CO2 emissions among the streams of a given production route, as well as to determine the overall exergy conversion efficiency of the production processes. Accordingly, the non-renewable unit exergy cost CNR kilojoule per kilojoule is defined as the rate of non-renewable exergy necessary to produce one unit of exergy rate flow rate of a substance, fuel, electricity, work or heat flow, whereas the total unit exergy cost court includes the renewable CR and non-renewable unit exergy costs. Analogously, the CO2 emission cost CCO2 GCO2 per kilojoules is defined as the rate of CO2 emitted to obtain one unit of exergy rate – flow rate. <inaudible> Renewables Topic: Photovoltaics. Photovoltaic prices have fallen from $76.67 per watt in 1977 to nearly 23 cents per watt in August 2017 for crystalline silicon solar cells. This is seen as evidence supporting Swanson's law, which states that solar cell prices fall 20% for every doubling of cumulative shipments. The famous Moore's law calls for a doubling of transistor count every two years. 
By 2011, the price of PV modules per megawatt had fallen by 60% since 2008, according to Bloomberg New Energy Finance estimates, putting solar power for the first time on a competitive footing with the retail price of electricity in some sunny countries. An alternative and consistent price decline figure of 75% from 2007 to 2012 has also been published, though it is unclear whether these figures are specific to the United States or generally global. The levelized cost of electricity LCOE from PV is competitive with conventional electricity sources in an expanding list of geographic regions, particularly when the time of generation is included, as electricity is worth more during the day than at night. There has been fierce competition in the supply chain, and further improvements in the levelized cost of energy for solar lie ahead, posing a growing threat to the dominance of fossil fuel generation sources in the next few years. As time progresses, renewable energy technologies generally get cheaper, while fossil fuels generally get more expensive. The less solar power costs, the more favorably it compares to conventional power, and the more attractive it becomes to utilities and energy users around the globe. Utility-scale solar power could in 2011 be delivered in California at prices well below $100 per megawatt-hour less than most other peak generators, even those running on low-cost natural gas. Lower solar module costs also stimulate demand from consumer markets where the cost of solar compares very favorably to retail electric rates. In the year 2015, First Solar agreed to supply solar power at 3.87 cents per kilowatt hour levelized price from its 100 megawatts Playa Solar 2 project, which is far cheaper than the electricity sale price from conventional electricity generation plants. From January 2015 through May 2016, records have continued to fall quickly, and solar electricity prices, which have reached levels below 3 cents per kilowatt hour, continue to fall. In August 2016, Chile announced a new record low contract price to provide solar power for $29.10 per megawatt hour MWH. In September 2016, Abu Dhabi announced a new record-breaking bid price, promising to provide solar power for $24.20 per megawatt hour in October 2017. Saudi Arabia announced a further low contract price to provide solar power for $17.90 per megawatt hour, with a carbon price of $50 per ton. Which which would raise the price of coal fired power by 5C per kilowatt hour. Solar PV is cost competitive in most locations. The declining price of PV has been reflected in rapidly growing installations, totaling a worldwide cumulative capacity of 297 gigawatts by end 2016. According to some estimates total investment in renewables for 2011 exceeded investment in carbon-based electricity generation. In the case of self-consumption, payback time is calculated based on how much electricity is not brought from the grid. Additionally, using PV solar power to charge DC batteries, as used in plug-in hybrid electric vehicles and electric vehicles, leads to greater efficiencies, but higher costs. Traditionally, DC-generated electricity from solar PV must be converted to AC for buildings, at an average 10% loss during the conversion. 
Inverter technology is rapidly improving and current equipment has reached 99% efficiency for small-scale residential, while commercial-scale three-phase equipment can reach well above 98% efficiency. However, an additional efficiency loss occurs in the transition back to DC for battery-driven devices and vehicles, and using various interest rates and energy price changes were calculated to find present values that range from $2,057.13 to $8,213.64 analysis from 2009, it is also also possible to combine solar PV with other technologies to make hybrid systems, which enable more stand-alone systems. The calculation of LCOEs becomes more complex, but can be done by aggregating the costs and the energy produced by each component. As for example, PV and Kogan and batteries while reducing energy and electricity related greenhouse gas emissions as compared to conventional sources. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Solar thermal LCOE of solar thermal power with energy storage which can operate round the clock on demand, has fallen to $78 per megawatt hour $61 per megawatt hour in August 2017. Though solar thermal plants with energy storage can work as stand-alone systems, combination with solar PV power can deliver further cheaper power. Cheaper and dispatchable solar thermal storage power need not depend on costly or polluting coal, gas, oil, nuclear-based power generation for ensuring stable grid operation. When a solar thermal storage plant is forced to idle due to lack of sunlight locally during cloudy days, it is possible to consume the cheap excess infirm power from solar PV, wind, and hydro power power plants similar to a lesser efficient, huge capacity and low-cost battery storage system by heating the hot molten salt to higher temperature for converting the stored thermal energy into electricity during the peak demand hours when the electricity sale price is profitable. <laughs> Wind power. Current land-based wind in the windy Great Plains expanse of the central United States new construction wind power costs in 2017 are compellingly below costs of continued use of existing coal-burning plants. Wind power can be contracted via a power purchase agreement at $0.02 cents per kilowatt-hour while the operating costs for power generation in existing coal-burning plants remain above $0.03. Cents. Current offshore wind in 2016 The Norwegian Wind Energy Association estimated the LCOE of a typical Norwegian wind farm at €44 Euros per megawatt-hour, assuming a weighted average cost of capital of 8% and an annual 3,500 full load hours, i.e. a capacity factor of 40%. NORWEA went on to estimate the LCOE of the 1 GW Fossen Wind onshore wind farm which is expected to be operational by 2020 to be as low as €35 Euros per megawatt-hour to €40 Euros per megawatt-hour. In November 2016, Vattenfall won a tender to develop the Krieger's Flak Windpark in the Baltic Sea for €49.90 per megawatt-hour, and similar levels were agreed for the Borzell offshore wind farms. As of 2016, this is the lowest projected price for electricity produced using offshore wind. 
Historic levels in 2004, wind energy cost a fifth of what it did in the 1980s, and some expected that downward trend to continue as larger multi megawatt turbines were mass produced. As of 2012 capital costs for wind turbines are substantially lower than 2008-2010 but are still above 2002 levels. A 2011 report from the American Wind Energy Association stated Winds costs have dropped over the past two years, in the range of 5 to 6 cents per kilowatt hour recently. about 2 cents cheaper than coal fired electricity, and more projects were financed through debt arrangements than tax equity structures last year. Winning more mainstream acceptance from Wall Street's banks. Equipment makers can also deliver products in the same year that they are ordered instead of waiting up to three years as was the case in previous cycles. 5,600 megawatts of new installed capacity is under construction in the United States, more than double the number at this point in 2010. 35% of all new power generation built in the United States since 2005 has come from wind, more than new gas and coal plants combined. As power providers are increasingly enticed to wind as a convenient hedge against unpredictable commodity price moves. This cost has additionally reduced as wind turbine technology has improved. There are now longer and lighter wind turbine blades, improvements in turbine performance, and increased power generation efficiency. Also, wind project capital and maintenance costs have continued to decline. For example, the wind industry in the USA in 2014 was able to produce more power at lower cost by using taller wind turbines with longer blades, capturing the faster winds at higher elevations. This opened up new opportunities in Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio. The price of power from wind turbines built 300 to 400 feet 91 to 122 meters above the ground can now compete with conventional fossil fuels like coal. Prices have fallen to about 4 cents per kilowatt hour in some cases and utilities have been increasing the amount of wind energy in their portfolio, saying it is their cheapest option. Topic. See also Topic. Further reading Economic value of U.S. fossil fuel electricity health impacts. United States Environmental Protection Agency the Hidden Costs of Electricity, Comparing the Hidden Costs of Power Generation Fuels. Civil Society Institute. Lazard's Levelized Cost of Energy Analysis, Version 11.0, November. 2017.